Welcome to The Pine Talk, episode 8, where we tend to squawk. But this will be great. Don't listen to the hate, it's unnecessary weight. Feel that frisson when you open that gate, getting bullied through chat like a fruit bat, empty soul after that, that little brat. It's just that, some call my poems cringe, careful now, don't infringe on my cringe, or be prayful that I don't unhinge. Anyway... Let's get on with the show, though we can take and shape this dough however we like. Whoa, watch out for my for the tight rhymes that I write, hopefully filling you with such delight. Though with some time to grow, it'll glow, so perhaps we should take it slow. Though we don't have a quota, we oughta go with the flow, we gotta probably start the show. Yo. I agree. Hello and welcome <laughs> to the eighth episode of Pine Talk. The podcast for the Pine64 community by members of the Pine64 community. I am Peter, dead joke master without kids, not kidding. And I am Ezra, Fosware poet and content creator. The third and final community quote of the day is by Matt Berger. On Twitter, he says, we're definitely hitting the same high notes, we're just not singing the same song. So, thank you for that, Matt, for sending it in. I feel like that actually represents pretty well the software development side of uh, PinePhone and PineTime, uh, where there's a lot of good, interesting ideas that everybody's uh, throwing in, but uh, there's also a lot of... Uh, repetition a lot of people are uh have their own vision but sometimes that leads to you know reinventing the wheel more often than not what do you think yeah that's you know the old problem of open source software in general i think mm -hmm. people scratching their own itch <laughs> um i could talk about this for longer but i think uh we should get started with the show we will have some community news and of course go through some of your feedback and questions but first what have you been up to lately well i'm still working on my point and click adventure game i added some uh, auto loading features for uh, sound effects and background music and i worked on some art and uh, some scenes in the game i'm not very good at art but uh, you know i try uh, my game is releasing in less than 50 days, so I'm pretty excited about that. Of course, it's open source, and after I release it, I'll probably mess around and try to get it running on a Pine phone, because why not, right? Uh, <laughs> and I'm that close already to getting it running, so I see no reason to not try. And more relevantly, uh, some good news. I got my Pine time. Hey, awesome. Uh, among other things, too. Um uh, so finally, I can I get to talk about the vast array of other products that Pine offers, which to me were a complete mystery. So I'm happy that I I have it. I haven't exper experimented with the uh, with the Pine Time much, but uh, you know I installed the, the newer newest version 1.0 uh, of uh, Pine Time, and it's super no of Infinite Time, sorry, and it's super duper. Awesome. Uh, we're going to talk more about it uh, in the future, and I'm going to make videos about it among the other products. Uh, so, uh, you know, check that out on my YouTube channel, Electronion, also available on Odyssey. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> what about you, Peter? What have you been up to? <laughs> well, I'm certainly looking forward to what you're coming up with that pint cube. Spoiler. <laughs> 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 yeah well i've been uh doing a lot um i've been quite busy actually um my blog colinmob.net is now running with zolar a static site generator written in rust it was a lot of work and because i could not decide on a new design i decided eventually to bring the old one over which then 
took some fixing so i think i was felt almost done with it like on sunday so yeah on the 2nd of may so i i made my first of may lo- relaunch but uh it wasn't really good then but i've already uh written uh more than i did in the past weeks so i hope i can keep that up because that was one of the ideas of making this uh bringing old content back uh, but also making it easier for me to write new one because uh, of having a, well something that works better for me you know zola i can easily run that on my pine phone too so i can have my i'm deploying my website with git so i can have my repo on the pine phone and preview what i've done in zola and then uh, commit it and push it upstream so that it's on the side so that's pretty cool and i look forward to using that more that's pretty cool so there's still of course a lot to do you know fixing old posts some of them still have uh, images embedded that are hosted on google and crap like that um but that's not an area of focus right now i will do that whenever i um i have time to waste but can't really do anything because i'm too tired for uh other things but can't sleep or something i don't know i will do that i don't know i'm just noticing that uh, that sounds like i'm never going to do that <laughs> i hope that won't happen <laughs> well anyway <laughs> uh so for now i'm going to spend uh most of my time that i use for tasks like website maintenance uh, on a replacement for Linux apps um it's likely going to be uh zola based and um what i'm going to do is first working through the two ad lists removing some apps and putting them on the archival list list and so on so working through the content so that that's relatively current and then uh, i will also write a proposal for a future of linmap apps uh, which is likely going to be uh, linuxphoneapps.org and um, provide that uh, for discussion and i hope to be done with that um, proposal or whatever you want to call it that draft mm-hmm. before the next episode of this podcast if you have ideas uh, and uh, or just want to help out uh, please join the matrix group that's linked on linmapapps.frama.io okay that was quite long right <laughs> oh it's fine am i in that group yes you are yeah see so we're all there you know yeah. you want to join the the cool group you know you gotta <laughs> go, on, go join ahead yeah let's go on with the news then and yes the first item we have is a post by lukas uh, or luke arizinski uh, to the forums about the upcoming pinephone keyboard so this is um, not super current it was posted on the 24th of april and it has some pictures of the new keyboard and a video and you should check it out i think it's quite excited to exciting to still see this coming but honestly i just want to have it <laughs> <laughs> it's so tantalizingly close it just just uh it's gonna be cool it's gonna be nifty i think for sure definitely infinitime 1.0 though you don't have to wait too long to have that as it's released yeah and we both uh, both have it <laughs> we both have it and <laughs> so we really don't have to wait too long <laughs> But yeah, it's super cool. Uh, uh, I know I'm enjoying uh, Infinite Time, and it uh, definitely uh, has improved uh, both in uh, usability and in polish in the new version since the uh, old one that I used for like a couple minutes <laughs> before <laughs> updating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what also came along with this was that the Pine, Pine Time, which previously was just available as a unsealed developer device or a three pack was mm-hmm. then available as a one pack sealed time pine time 
Um, but well, stocks didn't last, so it sold out and uh, is hopefully going to be back in stock in June. From what I'm reading on the store, I got a pine time and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got three. <laughs> <laughs> that's just showing off i know i know <laughs> you're wearing two of them on your wrist right now aren't you yeah yeah <laughs> let's let's briefly go from hardware to software and plasma mobile have released another blog post where they have been detailing their progress and there's a lot in there so neo chat has seen improvements eliza which is a music app that you may know from your Plaster desktop, also works on fonts now quite well. Uh, Coco, an image viewer, has seen some improvements and has a small image editor now. Anglefish uh, has a new swipe feature on the navigation bar so that you can go easier go back and forward the page which was a bit clunky before. And the performance has also been improved. And so on. There's a lot more in here. There's a little funny app called Day Countdown, uh, which you can, I don't know, track your family's birthday with so that you know that you when, 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 when the count is like at 10, you should really try to find a gift <laughs> or something. Uh, and one thing, isn't in there and that's a new app and it's called casts with a k and that's a podcast app and i tried it today and it's really nice so well i was slightly wrong here it's in the update but it was then still planned as a feature for alligator which is the feed reader for the plasma mobile software ecosystem and yeah it's now a separate app which makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. and uh, it isn't really in the proper namespace yet but uh, what's on there we'll link it uh, you can build that relatively easily on your pine phone it's not a huge app and it's it works great it even saves the point in time where you've been before you stop playing and then close the app and then uh, continue later so that's something that was lacking with the other podcast options for the pine phone and so this is really a welcome addition for me personally because i love podcasts surprise mm -hmm. Yeah, saving where you are in time is a small yet incredibly useful <laughs> yeah. feature to have. I mean, with podcasts like ours, that's at most at around one hour. It's already annoying if you lose the position and you don't know where you were. Uh, mm -hmm. But think of podcasts that take like three or four hours. Mm -hmm. That's terrible <laughs> because you'd sometimes really don't know whether where in the second hour you've been right like <laughs> oh i stopped somewhere it was more than one hour but was it three already i don't know and then you have a lot of scrubbing to do and with this you don't so casts with a k great addition to that app ecosystem and is it pretty smooth like are you, let's say you do scrub does it scrub uh scrub okay I didn't really test scrubbing yet, uh, honestly, and I won't do it du during this recording. <laughs> but it it is scrubbable. It has a little mm -hmm. um, slider down there. I don't know whether you can actually use it while it's on, but yeah, it's um, it's quite nice already. Good. Really, I've seen verse one dot os, and this is a uh, zero dot one. <laughs> And Speaking of wonder, though, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> Megapixels one point zero point one has a GTK four and an accelerated viewfinder, both of which I didn't get to exper experience yet because uh, I've refused to update my, my my phone since I installed Manjaro on it, and oh. it's uh, 
you know, still uh, updating. And then the batteries may have ran out during that update process. It's a whole thing. But (laughs) I can tell you my experience with the older version of Megapixels whatever version i was running which i don't even know yeah. but uh you know 1. the version 1. we all know or something uh peter peter can be uh can tell us how much awesomer it is because i remember it being excited anyway <laughs> i was happy that it displayed anything at all you know i got to see that greenish tint of the camera yeah. just absolute mwah, pine <laughs> accent situation <laughs> It's uh, quite wonderful, but it's, it was so laggy. Like, I'd aim at something, and I'd have to wait a, a few seconds before uh, <laughs> something showed up on the screen. Has that oh. changed? Yeah, that that has changed. Uh, I think it's a lot smoother. Um, it ha- Megapixels had this blue screen bug. Mm. Uh, not blue screen as in Windows failed, mm-hmm. <laughs> but blue screen as in that was tinted blue uh after first launch on the main camera and you had to basically switch cameras twice or just kill the app and restart it to fix that this bug is gone it's um i don't know it's not 60 fps but 30 maybe i think it feels like 30 fps now um and yeah so it's pretty good and the results are also nice um just check out that shot on PinePhone hashtag on um, the Fediverse or Twitter in the coming days, and you'll find a lot. And maybe I'll link something in the show notes about this. But this is definitely a huge improvement, and I think uh, we should have Martin on eventually. Heck yeah. Be quite interesting. Also, um, while adding this, I felt like, hmm, how, what about a Pine Phone app of the fortnight or maybe app of the episode as a segment <laughs> for this podcast? Please leave feedback if you would find this interesting. And now let's get back to the Pine Time. Ezra, you got your Pine Time earlier today, if I'm not completely mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Today uh, I woke up. I didn't have a, I did a pine time, and then I did have a pine time. So yeah, I I checked uh, the the uh, the tracking, and there it was. So I'm pretty <laughs> new uh, to, to what I got to test. Uh, you're pretty much with me, like for the most most of my experimentation, but. Uh, uh, you know just everything i was saying earlier um but there are a lot of good things that i can say right now as a first impression um which is one wearing out my wrist right now it's super light it's just as light as any other digital watch uh and lighter than even some normal you know watches since it's not made out of metal it's it's digital on the screen and battery isn't uh that heavy and it's not clunky at all either it's like really it's surprisingly like normal if you know what i mean which is strange to say um but i think what uh you know i think that's really cool that it looks like a you know a normal watch and feels like a normal watch and even behaves like a normal watch a smart watch that is i suppose as well um obviously it doesn't do none of the fancy things your expensive watches can do but like these watches aren't that expensive either which is you know really cool i think i mean it's a watch too like don't need that yeah it shouldn't shouldn't be like that hard to run like your average stuff but yeah we um to install the new update to uh the to infinite time uh which is what i wanted to try out uh i used uh siglo by uh recommendation of uh you peter uh, so thank yeah. you for uh telling me how all that works uh so i used siglo and that allows you to flash the firmware of your pine time through the air that is Super duper awesome and uh, super duper scary. Uh, I find <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right? 
Well, there's no other way to update this thing, so I mean, that's point. what we have to use. It's just what happens if, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's designed. So I had flash uh, attempts failing and mm -hmm. uh, I didn't manage to break uh, a pine time. So it's fine. And I think uh, what really Alex Robinson did a great job at designing this app. It's quite mm -hmm. basic, uh, but it does the important things. and. That's what Im what's important, right? So it's mm -hmm. simply the important enough, things are important. But you know, it allows you to just download um, the releases of Infinity Time, mm -hmm. so you don't have to go to the website in the later releases. I think you had an older mm -hmm. version on Manjaro, right? Yeah, I did. So I just downloaded the uh, release off of uh, GitHub. But uh, you know, it worked. It worked perfectly fine, nonetheless, right? So I had uh, only, you know, I mean, not issues that aren't known. Like it took a few tries before it saw the thing connected. But it yeah. says that on the app itself. So, and then I only had one time where it failed during the process, uh, which was the first time, and <laughs> I tried it, and uh, yeah, it just says error and goes back to whatever. It was running before, so I would say, like you were saying, like a really good job on everybody's part, I think, for making sure that the process doesn't fail. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I think uh, you, there's no other way to flash these, right? Um, mm -hmm. If you want to flash them with, or debug them for development, you have to get one of those unsealed developer units. Mm -hmm. And there's also... Um, uh, SQ, as a, as, as also something in the store where you can, I think, buy one sealed and one unsealed for exactly mm -hmm. that purpose now. So, mm -hmm. if you want to get that, that's also an option. If you really want to get into development beyond, I don't know. I don't think you need this to develop watch faces. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that I noticed because I've been having this. Uh, for the past week and so i was like okay now watch faces how do i flash them oh this looks like it's the entire os uh, but yeah that's how it is currently with infinite time <laughs> if you want a new watch face you just reflash the entire os and then you've got the os with one more watch face or um well a replaced digital watch face often mm -hmm. and it that's fine. Yeah. It's good for now. You know, uh, yeah. we'll see what new tech people, uh, new, new stacks people make new processes. Yeah. I mean, there, there are different OSs. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've been looking into, um, VASP OS too. Mm -hmm. So I took, uh, another one of my three pack of pine times and decided okay this is going to be my wasp os pine time because wasp os uh, uses micro python and that's quite interesting because i can at least somewhat read python it's easy enough mm -hmm. so i figured mm -hmm. like if i want to do something with this um, that's where i could get started uh, and i had seen videos about it so seemed pretty good and I read the instructions and uh, I would then was just brave and figured ah, well let's just use Cyclo and see if we can't flash that VASPOS bootloader that you need to flash first because that's a two step flash process mm -hmm. um, to the pine time and mm. that works but after that uh, you currently need an Android phone that has a certain app. Um, we'll link the instructions for that. There is one for the Pine phone, uh, an app that's called Vasp Companion. And you're supposed to build it uh, via Flatpak. But the thing is, it doesn't build because a dependency is missing. I think that was the org.gnome.sdk. 338 or something 3.338 that's not 
available anymore. So it doesn't find the download neither on uh, both on Arch uh, 64, so both on ARM and both on AMD. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not good. <laughs> I tried to get that then running um, by modifying because uh, that Vasper's companion is also just Python. And I figured, okay, let's adjust some path here and there and figure out the dependencies, install them manually, and then maybe it will run. But uh, yeah, I, d I didn't get that to work. So that's something that's um, not as great because like this, you've got no companion app on your Pine phone. Mm -hmm. um, I think that MS Fish uh, can work as a VASPOS companion because it has two items uh, in its menu for the pine time, one is called infinite time, the other is called pine time. Um, but the problem is that I didn't really get it to sync or pair or anything on my Arch Linux ARM install, at least. So, yeah, if you've got success there, please tell me about it. And then there's a third option potentially, and that's an Android companion app that's also. It's not called VASP Companion, but VASP OS Companion. And that seems to be a Flutter app, so it might be possible to bring it over to the Pine phone. Because, mm. by the way, recently uh, Fluffy Chat, a uh, Flutter Matrix client, uh, became available for the Pine phone, and that's also running quite well in its second Flatpak release, I awesome. think. Yeah, uh, that's, but uh, that's back, cool. back to the Pine time. So, I have to admit, generally, uh, that earlier I wasn't really interested in this. So before I started with Pine Talk, and people asked me, "Hey," and us both, right? Hey, what's what's up with Pine Time? We're so excited for Pine Time. I was like, "Yeah, man, I've got this Pebble Time steel. I've have it, had, have had it since mm -hmm. 2015 or something, and it's still working. So I'm going to keep that." I don't need a new smartwatch. Mm -hmm. And the pine time is lighter. Uh, despite this being an LCD screen and not something reflective, I think the battery life with infinite time has been uh, comparable. So uh, I'm not using that heart rate measurement constantly. So uh, that helps with battery life, right? And... Uh, I don't know how often I charged this. Maybe once now, you know, this week I've had it. So I'm fine with that. And it's generally pretty nice. Uh, both Infinite Time and also Vatpers are nice uh, little OSs. I mean, they both have their rough edges. So in Infinite Time, you can't set the clock. That's what you need a cyclo or a math fish for. And <laughs> on VASPOS you can do that, but then VASPOS has other problems. Like I that said, there's no working companion app currently that I know of. So, yeah, so there's work to be done. But given that this is really a, quite a special product, it's uh, not running Linux, but some RTOS, and it's in its infancy. Mm -hmm. It's really impressive, and it's mm -hmm. pretty good. Oh, yeah. Impressively good, actually. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, uh, there's, with Infinite Time, I noticed, like, some, uh, they, they do, like, a, a smooth scroll animation when you switch pages. And, like, I I I have a few ideas on how they did it, but uh, I don't know. There's something about the fact that even though it's it's a bit of a cheat, like it's it's super smooth and you don't really yeah. notice it when you, when you use it, and it's like it runs super duper smooth. Yeah, it's really s silky smooth. My so, <laughs> sometimes you would wish that your Pine Phone was that smooth all the time. I right? know, right? <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first. Peter thinks that uh, the Pine Time runs smoother than the Pine Phone. I'm not saying that. 
It's a different <laughs> scope. The different scope for sure. Different OS. One is one's goal is to make phone calls. The other one is to tell you what time it is. I mean, maybe I think if you were to run a similar, similarly simple <laughs> OS, just assuming that this is relatively simple given the mm-hmm. limited compute resources of Pine Time uh, mm-hmm. on the Pine Phone, it should also be super smooth, right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know I hope that at some point certain uh, c- certain things, certain optimizations are done for Pine Phone specific things. Like I don't know, like the Pine Time, like I was mentioning, the scrolling. You know, that's very specific to the Pine Time, but you know it 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 just works so well. And I mean, cheat or no cheat, like if it does what it's supposed to do at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. Um, Although, I mean, it has gotten better on the Pine Phone. Oh, yeah, for sure. Having a Pine Phone since June, and it's so much better. So much smoother, battery life's better, everything's Mm -hmm. improved. Well, way beyond what I thought likely, honestly. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, I'm quite happy there, and there's still some potential here and there, of course. Yeah, I was I was gonna say that uh, like I, yeah, I one hundred percent agree. But uh, I st- I still see it possible to to squeeze more out of it. <laughs> Definitely, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So GG to all you uh, developers out there. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Pine time, pine phone, all the like. You guys are are awesome. Yeah. Although, although why is there a flash light app on? <laughs> <laughs> that's and you, uh are bad at finding your keys or using keys for the door maybe <laughs> yeah it's I, a watch man but it's it's also <laughs> it's it's on both os so it's also on us boys and i think there are more uh pine time os so yeah mm. get uh your pine time questions in now or more importantly tell us about uh, tell us what you like about pine time if you have one and what you're using um Mm -hmm. i also have to say thank you to i didn't prepare this of course uh to a nice person in the pine talk discord that built that casio watch face for me that's really great because uh i had some fake casio style watch face on my pebble for years so i'm i just i was just used to this and that was great to just post that there hey i would like to see this and then suddenly receive it that's quite awesome thank you so much that's awesome man yeah nice to see the generosity of the community thank you so much electrolyte great now let's go over to the listener questions right yes um so sleep dealer from Amazon asks us uh hey at talk pine do any of the pine phone os offerings have a voice keyboard or mycroft type assistant hashtag ask pine talk um yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) um (laughs) Uh, well, you can just like on your Linux desktop, find some text to speech. No, not text to speech. This is the other speech way around. To speech text. to text uh, software and uh, <laughs> wire that up in your Pine phone if you want to. And then you've got a voice keyboard, but you kind of need to implement parts of it for yourself, right? Yeah. That's the current state. And yeah. there's a Minecraft Assistant app front end uh, that was at least for a while on the Manjaro developer betas. Or not, no, not betas, those daily builds, you know, daily dev builds. And with Plasma Mobile, um, I tested that in a video, but you would have to hook it up to a full Minecraft install, which I think you could run on your pine phone too 
but um, yeah, that might use more resources than you would like. So <laughs> you should rather put that on something on your local network, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, it's possible there are things uh, for that. There are multiple projects uh, that go into this assistant thingy role um that i've seen i sadly don't recall all of them uh, and i haven't really tried them because i'm not a huge voice assistant or smart home or smart whatnot person i'm You're rather not a smart stupid person. <laughs> and do everything myself <laughs> yeah i close my window with my bare hands did you ever try Minecraft on your pine phone I never tried it on my Pine phone. I only got it uh, working on, uh, well, I got it working on my uh, desktop. I never did okay. try it uh, on the Pine phone. How well did it work for you? Because I never tried it on the desktop either. It worked super well, uh, but I had some uh, some f- setting up issues. And whenever I tried to change the yeah. um, the action word, which is like you say, like, hey, Mycroft, yeah. or you can also Hello, say other computer. ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they have like some predefined ones and you have to whatever choose from and one of them was uh hey ezra so i chose uh, that one of course okay that's great when somebody's visiting you yeah it's it's, it's absolutely <laughs> wonderful <laughs> but sadly uh my hilarity my my hilarities could not take place because uh after i did that uh it just refused to listen to me so it took <laughs> a few like reboots and w- resets and putting it back to mycroft until it listened to its own name Okay. I don't know why, but I'll call you Mycroft then, whatever. It's not like I wanted a robot with my name anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, otherwise, it was pretty cool, and I liked how it can control your system, which is what I think would be interesting also on a Pine phone, um, which is like, you know, I can be like, oh, hey, Mycroft, you know, put the volume to 25%, and uh, it'll set it your volume to 25% on hey, your Mycroft, system itself. Hey, enable the flashlight. Yeah. Well, I, I assume that... Um, you know, especially when it's easy customization, you could just link up, you know, certain actions to yeah. voice commands, which is yeah. where it could also be pretty useful. It could okay. be nifty to have it on on your phone because it could like, well, I mean, it's just whatever Google did too. You know, you could be like, how do I get here? And it opens up like the map app with the directions, you know, <laughs> set in, right? Yeah. Well, so. then we would have to have great maps apps uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, we've got some i mean pure maps is all right and you no know, maps is also fine <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thank you when i'm reading all these comments well i will switch to the pine phone as my daily driver once uh it has a maps app that at least at osm and you know open street map android a really full featured client level then i'm like yeah at least at that level like i will build a house once it's fully furnished doesn't make sense to me when people are like that but that's just me uh so let's go on with the next question and that was asked by epicanis on twitter would a hypothetical new redesigned pine tab 2 with more easily sourced parts be more feasible than chasing unavailable parts for the current pine tab. Listen. (sighs) (laughs) Yeah. I know we look like experts, (laughs) but we're just the beautiful voices that uh, spread information. (laughs) Usually correct information. We so to. when you ask us, uh, uh, well, like, I suppose hypothetically it would make sense, but you have to think about, like, you know, the design. You usually, like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I assume you, even things that on paper could be, uh, like, drop in, drop out replacements are going to cause some amount of hassle. Yeah. And you- the thing is when you change parts you will have to likely redesign at least parts of your board so you will have to go through multiple revisions again to make sure that this is production ready Mm -hmm. because yeah you likely won't get it right on the first try 
as a reason why the current pine form iteration is 1.2b. <laughs> 1.2 was supposed to be fine, but oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> mistakes happen, and you don't mm -hmm. always catch them in testing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, the problem currently is just that all parts are either unavailable or super expensive. And the pine yeah. tab, as it is envisioned, as far as I understand it, no expert there, uh, a product that has, is supposed to meet that really low uh, $100 price point. And when those parts are just too expensive because they cost like, I don't know, four or even 10 times what they normally cost, then or have long lead times, so you can't get them all in time, then it just doesn't make sense to produce it. So until the supply and the market goes back to, well, a new normal, because it likely won't be exactly the old normal, right? Mm -hmm. Until it finds some kind of equilibrium, as the economists say, uh, this will be tough. And I think there might be a point in time where Point sixty four might come up with another tablet or might be able to make some more pine tabs as they were originally envisioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, currently, it's not really looking good. And this is really yeah. affecting everybody. I mean, it's hitting mm -hmm. the big car manufacturers that mm -hmm. are billion-dollar companies. So, I mean... What do you expect Pine64 to do about that, realistically? Poor Widow Pine. Yeah. They're doing their best, man. They're doing their best, really. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I believe that yeah. sincerely. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like like you said, if the big boys are having a hard time, I mean, of course, like, yeah. we're, we're trying, you know. It's not obvious what to do. For anybody, I think, too. Uh, yeah. Do you design new things? Do you wait until the new old parts are available? Do you yeah, and how make long, your own processor? How long will those new parts that you pick be available at that price? Right <laughs> now, you just can't tell. Therefore, yeah. redesigning uh, doesn't really solve the issue because it's mm -hmm. a supply issue, mm -hmm. not a design issue. That's the world's. From what I understand. That, that's that's going to be 2021 in a nutshell, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like toilet paper. Yeah. And there was no toilet paper in early 2020. <laughs> but worth. Worth because this is not toilet paper. It's more complex. Yeah. First they take our toilet paper. Now this. They take our oh. ships. <laughs> they take our. <laughs> yeah. And displays and whatnot. It's all more expensive. Okay. And so then, hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, we hope that this helps. So, <laughs> lastly, I think this came in via email. By email, I didn't really notice this here. So, Ishep asks, I recently saw that NixOS was on the list of the OSs for the Pine phone. My first thought that this would give me a good reason to finally take a look at Nix. After far too much reading on how to install Nix, I was unable to get an image compiled to try it out. Oh well, guess I gotta keep at it still. I was wondering if either of y'all have come across anyone who has played with Nix on the Pine phone and if it is a viable OS for it. Cheers, Eship. Well, thank you for that question. Ezra, have you played with NixOS on the PinePhone or any other computer? I, I have not. I'm pretty sure I've barely even heard of it. Although, I'm, if I do remember, the icon might look something like a snowflake. Or am I completely mistaken? It's something <laughs> blue, snowflakey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have not you, played you're, with you're, it. You're, you're totally correct there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, I have not played with it, but uh, it definitely looked um, unique yeah. and interesting. So, um, yeah. What about you? Do you know anybody yeah, who's played I with it? Yeah, I didn't try it, and I don't know anyone who did, actually. 
So mm. I don't recall seeing a video uh, of somebody demoing this. I didn't see much about this on Twitter. I might, I mean, I might have eventually, but my memory, you know, I can't say, oh, on the 2nd of August, I remember exactly. No, mm -hmm. sorry, my memory is not good enough for that. So well, I think we maybe need to ins uh, briefly right. try to explain what Nix is. So Nix yeah. is uh, a way to come up with infrastructure that is defined by a a couple of files that are basically configuration files that then build the entire system. So it's in a way then reproducible. Interesting. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So you would run all the same software as long as there there are Nix files for that. Mm -hmm. So I know some people that do stuff with Nix, but they do it on server side, so they deploy mm -hmm. next cloud and stuff like that with mix and that would be what i would use it for um i have once tried to do something with nix uh, and that was uh using a pre-built nix image for the pine cube but that didn't work for me but i didn't mm -hmm. try real long so yeah mm -hmm. i went back to ambient because i felt like a uh, this is a system where I understand what it's doing and how to update it, so I'll keep that. <laughs> yeah. But NixOS is definitely interesting, and I think it is viable. Uh, but you have to be somewhat of a Nix master, I think, to package up all the software that you would want on a phone, because that's likely not... You will not find the, the files to build the software yeah. Um, just in the Nix repos because um, yeah there's Nix OS mobile so a base set will be there but I doubt like that stuff like I don't know MS Fish or Cyclo are already uh, available for Nix easily and then yeah so it's interesting it's something that I would love to look into if I had like I don't know a long holiday yeah, and then a fresh brain and could my, wrap my head around it, but ah, it's unfortunately unlikely. And for you, if you at home want to try NixOS, maybe uh, like before trying to get it working on a on a Pine phone, try getting it working on like I don't know something else, an old computer to get get your like you were saying like to. I mean, you know, you'd almost have to be a Nix pro. You got to kind of know what you're doing. So try it on a virtual machine. Try getting your feet wet. And like, nonetheless, that's the whole point of this in the community, right? Have fun, experiment, learn. And as you become better with Nix, experiment then on getting it working on the, on the Pine phone. Anyway, that's what I suggest. I don't know about yeah. you. I agree. And that's Again. our questions for this week. Uh, thank you for sending these questions in. Please, everybody, if you've got a question, uh, there are no dumb questions. Just send it in uh, and have us answer it. Or if you've got a comment on something we said, maybe uh, you can send in uh, a simple MP3 recording of yours mm -hmm. and we can play it on the show so that we've got audio feedback in the show that would be something that we've talked about before but it didn't happen we didn't receive any files so maybe if you've got an okay microphone just try that yeah that would be great we're really looking Even if forward you don't, give it a try to your feedback and questions and please keep them coming because they are essential uh, because this is supposed to be a community podcast so yeah, yeah. we're not always the best at uh being super active on the forums or Twitter and mm -hmm. Mastodon, I've been quite bad at that lately. I explained earlier in the show why. <laughs> because I, <laughs> sadly, my day only has 24 hours. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we try to be better at that. And thanks for your questions. They are highly yeah. appreciated. We really do appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah. This is not the Ezra and Peter podcast. <laughs> no. 
Die Ezra yes. und Peter Show. Yeah. <lacht> um, by the way, uh, I had been talking about podcast directories for a while and mm -hmm. after the last episode was recorded, I noticed that we are now on G Potter. Yeah. I don't know how this happened, but we are listed <laughs> on G Potter, which uh, caused my hair to go gray. Uh, no, not really. Um, and while we are at awesome stuff, once more, a huge thanks to NerdZoom Media for being our excellent audio producers. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll be back in two weeks, as always. And remember, once again, I just said it, but I will say it again. This is a community podcast, so please leave feedback on what we should do better. Get your suggestions in. And feel free to ask questions. You can't spell community without unity. <sighs> so let's unite. And <laughs> I, I don't know where to go from this. So you can join the Discord channel, yeah. Pine Talk Dash Podcast on Pine64's Discord. You can send us an email at pinetalk at pine64.org and tweet at us. We're at TalkPine. We've joined Mastodon. Uh, we're at talkpine at fostadone.org. Uh, if you can't remember these names, just use the hashtag AskPineTalk. Yes, do that. Thank you for listening and talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.